So last time we were working on differential equations. Well, we just got to the beginning of it. Uh, we defined what an equ a differential equation is. And what else? We did a baby example. Um, with the baby example and we made a distinction between an algebraic equation and a differential equation how we solve them in a very similar way as, as we solve equations by doing uh, inverse operations of every single factor or term you know in order to isolate for a particular I don't know, variable or symbol, depending on the situation. The difference between algebraic equations and differential equations is that differential equations but the solution of a differential equation is not just a value. It's, well, it could be a value depending on the nature of the differential equation. But uh, in this case, it is actually another function. And, that's, uh, and the, the way the differential equations look like, they contain their, the same function or and actually at least one of their derivatives, all right? So it could be a second derivative, a third derivative, and but well, so let's, so we got one to one example. And well, so differential equations are pretty much everywhere in nature. I mean, we can model any situation, um, you know, any situation using a differential equation, using this derivative, this derivative symbol to denote the rate of change of some quantity with respect to another quantity. And you might have worked with some solutions of differential equations before, like this model, dpdt equals kp, which is um, a model that is used to, to describe or to, yeah, to describe population growth or radioactive decay, population growth or decay, well, it, does, it, it doesn't have to be, the decay doesn't have to be for radioactive situations all the time. It, it can also be for, for population. However, this is just a very simple model because, well, I mean, again, the, the, the description of the model here is that the population size changes with respect to time, you know, so different times there's people people die, other people are born, you know, so population, population changes over time. However, in this baby model, we are not considering every single factor that can also intervene during this process, like the limitations of the community or any other, any other methods, or I mean any other factors. So, remember we had this model, uh-huh. If this constant k is a number greater than zero, then we were modeling growth. But otherwise, when that value of k is a negative number, that means decay. And well, what's the solution to this differential equation? I will just give you the solution and you will, pretty and you will recognize this model actually. P equals P initial e to the kt. Where have you seen this model before? Haven't you seen this model back in pre-calculus and what else? Intermediate algebra to model different situations in population. Not just population, actually there's another one for compound interest where the accumulated equals the principal e to the RT, you know? So that's another exponential model. So uh, where's other models used? Well, based on this same differential equations, those of you who have taken or are to take a chemistry class or are chemistry majors, actually, if we consider the chemical reaction, something simple. A goes to B with some rate constant, right? And that depends on the catalyst or whether we not we don't have a catalyst in their chemical not chemical reaction so the profile of the chemical reaction here is the following well i mean in general not all chemical reactions behave like this that's something worth noting so number one so initially we have the reactants and in general we express these quantities of reactants as their molar concentration moles per liter and well, so at the beginning of the experiment in our flask or the reaction system, what do we have? 
we have our initial concentration. So the profile for these chemical reactions, as time progresses well, uh, that reactant starts to disappear until we get well. It, we, we never get nothing because this is an exponential model and for the exponential model the exponentials are never zero and that's where uh, where the yield that the, where the reaction yield is it's, it's coming into play right here so it's never the case in which you get a hundred percent yield in other words react reactants never never run out and you never get a hundred percent of the product that you would be expe expecting and um, and that's due to uh, the chemical equilibrium in which we have reactants and products at the same time so what happens over here so the chemical species A disappears to give rise to the product so initially we don't have we have zero product and that goes like this, starts growing exponential, right? Well, this is described with the following differential equations, if we will. So number one, uh, we can describe the rate of change of the concentration of A with respect to time equals to negative KT. In this case, the reason why I'm using negative KT is because this reactant is disappearing, it's running out, it, we're losing reactant. It's a decay in the reactant. And as opposed to uh, the differential equation for, for the product, in this case, well, because it's, it's positive, it's, it's increasing, well, this K has to be a, pos a positive value, all right? Well, um, of course, this is one of the very sim sim one of the simplest mo models for chemical reaction. There's a bunch of different situations in chemical reactions. You know, sometimes you may have parallel reactions, like you have the same in the same flask. You're producing some react so some product and another product. So you have to set up a system of differential equations in that situation, or you have like uh, like this pretty cool system when you have A going to B and at the same time that B goes to C with different rates of reaction. It doesn't have to be necessarily the same rate because it's different, different reactions, different products, you know, different re reactants as well. And well, this situation gives rise to a pretty cool uh, differential equation that is solved using one of the different methods to solve the equation. So, uh, in summary, what I'm trying to say is, well, Differential equations are pretty much everywhere. So those of you who are electrical uh, engineers, so you will model circuits involving the voltage and the potent and, and the charges, etc., uh, using differential equations. So what else in civil engineering when setting systems of forces for beams? You know, your structure design. You will use, you will be using differential equations to to get this, um, to calculate what you want to, what you want, different forces, etc., or a missing force, depending on the situation. All right, so I don't want to overwhelm you with all these situations, just want to mention it's something that exists, those of you especially chemistry majors, um, you will get to see this pretty cool stuff. Okay, general differential equation. So we are going to do a baby, a baby classification of differential equation, and, and I say baby different, baby classification because we haven't gotten into every single detail to do a further classification of this equation. So for now, we will classify the differential equations by their order, and the order of the differential equation is going to be given by the highest derivative that you see c in the equation well so like the first equation that we have here well dy dx minus 2 e to the 2xy equals to the square root of x okay all we have to focus is on the derivative term and in this case it's only the first derivative for this reason this is a first order differential equation for the second example, y double prime plus 4y prime plus 5y, well in this case, um, if we observe the y's, 
we have the highest derivative to be the second derivative. So for this reason, this is a second, second order DE. And of course, there is a more, there is a fancier classification of differential equations. Number one, based on whether these equation, these differential equations are linear or non-linear, and furthermore, whether this these differential equations are ordinary differential equations or partial differential equations. So the ones that we that we're dealing with in this class are ordinary differential equations because we're dealing with ordinary derivatives. That is derivatives of functions of one single variable. So the reason why we're not going to talk about partial differential equations in this class is because you first need to learn about partial derivatives, but that's going to happen next semester when you take calculus 3. And in fact, you may have seen a partial, a very famous partial differential equation, Schrodinger's equation in your chemistry class. It's a really big equation with partial derivatives and then this, it has this potential function for the position of the particle at some surface, you know, something really, really crazy. But this is not going to be uh, anything we will be looking for, but you will look at this equation. Well, well, those of you that are chemistry majors in physical chemistry, when you get to to the quantum mechanics of the, the quantum mechanics part of physical chemistry, or those of you who are physics and majors maybe, or are set to take higher levels of physics, well, you will, you will learn about this partial differential equation, solving the, the Schrodinger's equation, and other equations that are also defined in terms of partial derivatives, the heat equation, uh, Laplace's equation, and another equation to model vibrations of a, of a drum or on a leg or when there's a, there's an earthquake as well. So those situations are modeled by this partial differential equation, but uh, that's going to be later. So for now, we're just going to go with baby differential equations. Well, we already classified them as based on their order of the highest derivative. That's all we do for this class. Now let's move on to define or to distinguish rather between general and particular solutions. So which one is which? So uh, guess what? Um, since the last couple of weeks in your calculus course and pretty much the entire semester so far in the class, you have been solving differential equations, but they haven't told you, and I haven't told you about it because, uh, well, we. What, what do we mean by that? Well, ultimately, so when we solve this differential equation, or rather, if we consider the function y equals x squared, back in calculus one, they ask you to find the derivative of that function, whether it's the limit definition or the general power rule. Of course, let's do the general power rule y equals 2x. In calculus 1, you look at that symbol y prime as just a, sim a, single, sim a single symbol to denote a derivative. Another symbol for this is the symbol dy dx. And this is more explicit because this shows how the, which one is the dependent variable and which one is the de independent variable in this case y, which depends on x, is changing with respect to x, with, with respect the variable it depends on. All right? And regardless of whether you use the first notation, the prime notation, which is the Lagrangian notation, or the Leibniz notation, the dy dx, you, you, you treat it like a single symbol, a single symbol only. But later in your semester, in calculus one, you treat it that dy dx and give it a new identity. This time you treat it as a quotient of two quantities, in this case dy dx. And you use that to take the differential of the function. So we multiply both sides by the x by the x to get to x dx. Alright, so you did that almost uh, I would like to I'd like to remember, I think it's like the, the, the sec, around the second third of the semester in, in, a, in, in, in calculus one. Well, and then from there you jumped to define the integral. However, you didn't go directly to the integral symbol. No, 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 you went 
to define the antiderivative first and then to find and then the geometric derivation or the geometric aspect of the integral which is really the area under the curve construct the area by chopping our region into a number of rectangles finding the area under the of the rectangles and adding infinitely many of them which is the same idea that we have been working on to further get volumes of solids of revolution by revolving a disk and finding the finding uh, the arc length by finding the arc length of infinitely many lengths and finding surface areas by again getting a partition of one single surface and adding infinitely many so that's the trick to get to the integral then you put together and they finally told you oh you can now integrate and that's y equals to x squared plus c all right Partial fraction decomposition, trigonometric substitution, integration by parts. All we have been doing is solving a differential equation when you had the integral of x cubed plus x squared over x squared plus 4. Remember this integral we did in class? That one to take, I think, two lectures. So really, this came from solving the differential equation dy dx equals to this madness. All right. So all we did is multiply both sides by the x and got to the integral. So we have been solving differentiate differential equations all the time, all right? But I never told you about differential equations all because uh, all this overwhelming amount of vocabulary, all these implications. So for now, well, in fact, you learned that as techniques to find antiderivatives, to find the integrals of the functions, right? Okay, so this one right here, y equals x squared plus c, it's called the general, the general solution. And we call it a general solution because that solution contains a c that we don't know what it is. In fact, this y equals x squared plus c is, you can think of, uh, of the description of a family of functions. So this will give rise to a family of functions depending on the different values of c. For example, if I have c equals to 0, c equals to 1, c equals to negative 3. That's going to give rise to different, to different solutions here. Number 1, y equals x squared plus c, which equals to zero, well, just x squared. So we don't need to write that zero. And then y equals x squared plus one, because c is one in this case. And last but not least, uh, how about y equals to x squared minus three. <laughs> All right. So let's graph these functions, these different functions. So for example, y equals x squared. Well, that's just a regular parabola that we know how we graph. And well, so that looks like this. For the other two, for, for the other two solutions, y equals x squared plus one. Well, we don't need to plot the points. All we can do is take advantage of what we know about shifting. So in this case, these are really vertical shifting. So that's one unit up and three units down. So, that's a plus 1 and minus 3, that's shifted 3 units down. Mm -hmm. And, alright, so what do we have essentially? A family of functions, right? Different members of the family contain different sets of numbers. You know, like every member in everyone's families here has different particularities, right? That some uniquenesses, right? So same happens with functions. Well, how do we call these uh, members of the family? Well, these are the particular solutions. So again, ultimately, well, we distinguish between a general solution from a particular solution. Well, we have a C, we don't have a C, we have an actual value for C. All right? Uh, what's next? Oh, yes, the next one. So how do we find that particular solution? So they're asking us to find a solution to the differential equation y prime equals to 2x. 
that satisfies the initial condition y of 0 equals to 5. Essentially, well, from here, we are going to create a family of functions. In fact, it's the same one we started with before. So I'm just going to give you, okay, y prime equals to x, dy dx. Well, let me just go straight to y equals to x squared plus c. And again, this is the general solution now our job is to find the particular member of the family that contains that initial condition well this initial condition how are we supposed to interpret it y of 0 equals to 5 well the way we break this down this is essentially f of x function you know f of x equals to 5 in other words x equals to 0 and y equals to 5. This is how we interpret this particular, so, I mean these initial conditions. So what are we going to do to find that particular member of the family that lives in the point 0, 5 essentially, right? So we have different members of the family, you know, uh, at home, you know, uh, at different rooms, living room, the room upstairs, downstairs, etc. Well, we're looking for the, for the particular member of family that lives in the point 0, 5. Well, all we have to do is plug in 0 whatever we see the x and y whatever we see the y which in this case is 5 0 squared plus c well 0 squared equals to 0 and c plus 0 that simply c equals to 5 so we may go back to write this constant over here That's y equals x squared plus 5. And in this case, this is the member of the family that lives in the point 0, 5. Again, we call this a particular solution. All right? Oh, what's next? Oh, verifying solutions. A little more on verifying solutions. We already did a little bit, so we're going to do something more elaborate this time. Verifying solution, well, again, we already did this back in our previous page, in the first page. So we solved the differential equation and then we did the check by finding the necessary derivatives of the given solution in particular for that first example we used for the motivation of the chapter of the section and it was only the first derivative now we're going to do something a little more elaborate well so this is simply a matter of calculating the necessary derivatives and substituting in wherever it corresponds in the equation well so how are we going to go about this number one so they're giving us some function, some random function, y equals e to the 2x plus ne e to the negative x minus 1. And they're asking us whether that, that function satisfies the equation of y double prime minus y prime minus 2y equals to 2. Well, the first thing we need to identify is what's the highest derivative in the differential equation. So we can find the necessary derivatives in order to plug them in the original differential equation. And in this case, this goes up to the second derivative. That means that we have to take two derivatives to this, different, to this given solution or proposed solution. For now, it's only a proposed solution. We will verify whether this is indeed a legit solution. So let's take the first derivative. So that's e to the 2x to e to the 2x plus e to the negative x, how actually it's going to be minus, right? Because the derivative of negative x is negative 1, so that plus will become a minus. Minus 1, oh, the derivative of negative 1 is just 0. Let's find y double prime. So the derivative of 2 e to the 2x, well, it's itself e to the 2x times the derivative of 2x, which is 2. But that 2 times the 2 that we already had, that becomes a 4. And 
the derivative of e to the negative x is itself e to the negative x, but the derivative of the exponent, which is negative 1, times the negative that we already have, that becomes a plus e to the negative x. Okay. So we have all the information that we need to determine whether this, is, this given function is indeed a solution to the differential equation. So let me highlight uh, in color code so you can see what, where and what am I going to substitute. So this y, which is going to be substituted here, and then this y prime, which will be substituted here and last but not least this double prime which will get substituted here all right where the second derivative goes so let's just go about it uh, <clears throat> so number one that's going to be four oops four e to the two x plus e to the negative x Minus, careful with this one because this negative sign will affect everything we substitute for y prime. So my advice is open parentheses. Uh -huh. Minus, open parentheses, write down the first derivative. Minus 2 times the original given function e to the 2x plus e to the negative x minus 1. And the question is, is all this madness on the left-hand side equals to 2? Well, we will find out by number 1. Using the distributive property on, well, the negative, distribute the negative over this first two, over these two terms in the middle term, and distribute the negative 2 over the f these three terms right here. So, all right, let's have a look at that. Let's see, where is that going to take us to? So 4 e to the 2x plus e to the negative x, so minus 2 e to the, e to the 2x, and careful here, minus times a minus, that becomes a plus e to the negative x. Minus 2 e to the 2x, minus e to the negative x, negative times a negative, again, careful, that's plus 2. Is that equal to 2? We'll find out. Question? After negative 2e to the 2x, that becomes minus 2e to the negative 2x. Which one? The uh, second to last distribution. This one? Yeah. So negative 2e. Yeah, it's negative 2 And. Now, because this one is positive, that becomes negative? Wait, but this is a the coefficient yes yes I missed the coefficient thank you thank you thank you mm -hmm. all right uh, that looks like a bunch of terms so how about we kind of book keep this okay notice we have exponential functions with power to x we have exponential powers with power negative x I'm gonna put two bars for the two x's and I'm gonna put a single bar for the negative x's all right let's see what we get so, let's go with the e to the 2x's. So, what do we have? 4 e to the 2x minus 2 e to the 2x. That's going to be 2 e to the 2x. Furthermore, subtract 2 e to the 2x. Oh, isn't that going to go to 0? Cancel them out. All right. What about the terms containing e to the negative x? Well, e to the negative x plus e to the negative x. That's 2 times e to the negative x. But those two terms combined with negative 2 e to the negative x will cancel out. What's, gonna, what's going to survive those cancellations? Oh, so is it true that 2 equals to 2? Yes. That means this is a solution, right? That means uh, y equals e to the 2x plus e to the negative x minus 1 is a solution. All right. All right. 
Let's have a look at the next example. Example number three. Determine whether the given function y equals c1 cosine to x plus c2 sine to x is a solution to the differential equation y double prime plus 4y equals e to the negative 4x. So, notice how these functions are given differently. So, this is actually just a general solution and this is actually a particular solution and again we, we distinguish between them by having the c's on the general solutions and not having c's on the particular solution so this was found by doing some process of an initial value problem by an initial condition this one is just a general solution all right let's have a look the differential equation calls for the highest derivative, in this case it's the second derivative, right? So let's go ahead and find the, the second derivative. Well, even though the differential equation uh, is not calling for the first derivative, we still need to find the first derivative to get to the second derivative, right? It's like we're in a building, we cannot go to the second floor without going through the first one, right? So, so same here, y prime, that's a uh, negative c, okay, I'm going to leave a space, negative c1 cosine 2x times mini chain rule, the derivative of 2x, which is 2, plus c2, the derivative of sine is cosine of 2x, times by chain rule, the derivative of 2x, which is 2, all right? And well, so let's take the second derivative here. So the, the, the second derivative will involve, I'm going to leave a space for the coefficient, uh, c1, wait, no, 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 no. This is sine, right? And yeah, that's fine, that's fine. All right, so this is c1, the derivative of sine, which is cosine of 2x. By mini chain rule, the derivative of 2x is 2, but that 2 times the negative 2 that we have here isn't that a negative 4? And for the last term, the derivative of cosine is negative c2 sine of 2x times the derivative of 2x, and that derivative happens to be 2 times 2, which is 4. So we have everything we need to verify the differential equation if this given function is indeed a solution. All right. So... <clears throat> Again, okay, let me just highlight this real quick. So that's going to be here. And the regional function is going to go here. So again, we don't need the first derivative. So y double prime, which is negative 4, c1 cosine 2x minus 4, c2 sine 2x plus 4 times the original function c1 cosine uh, 2x plus c2 sine 2x is that equal to oh uh, come on I'm going to erase this yeah e to the negative 4x let's find out all right, how about first we, how about we first distribute the 4 over the two terms. And well, so that's negative 4 C1 cosine of 2x minus 4 C2 sine 2x plus 4 times C1 cosine 2x plus 4c2 sine 2x. So is that equal to e to the negative 4x? Well, let's find out. So I think we're at a good place to cancel or combine like terms. Well, negative 4c1 plus 4c1 cosine, and yes, in this case, we get the following weirdness. Is 0 equal to e to the negative 4x? That's not equal to, all right, so in this case, it's 
it is the case that y equals to c1 cosine to x plus c2 sine of 2x is not a solution right and this actually finishes the section let's move on to section 9.2 Well, section 9.2, direction, field, and Euler's method for which we actually just go about, um, we just go about the direction field. We don't cover the Euler's method. Okay, what's this about? So, although so far we have basic, we have learned how to solve like just the basic case of the separation of variables those are actually analytic methods to solve differential equations but um, well we're going to get into the into the separation of variables a little bit more in depth when we get to section 9.3 all right so uh, but when you take the class differential equations you will learn a bunch of methods like uh, exact equations, a linear first order equation, reduction of order, using infinite series to solve equations, power series rather, uh, the Laplace transform, which is a whole new uh, type of mathematics called uh, operational calculus. It's pretty fun stuff. Uh, but in the meantime, well, the thing here is that even all those methods may not be good enough to solve the differential equations. And sometimes we are modeling a situation using a differential equation. And when it comes to choosing the best method or a suitable method to solve the equation, there's simply no way to solve the equation. So how do we go about it then? All right, well, so then we will have to go through other techniques. Number one, numerical methods and graphical methods. Well, we're not going to go through the numerical methods, but just to give, to give you an intro about what they are. Well, so essentially you will use programming, a programming language such as MATLAB or Python to model those equations. So actually, well, depending on what your major is, if you're a math major, you will take Math 541 here at SDSU, which is numerical analysis, and you will use either MATLAB or Python to solve equations, to go about numerical integration, solve differential equations, and a bunch of stuff to approximate solutions to many problems. Those of you who are engineering majors, you are going to take a class called numerical method, which I think is essentially the same as numerical analysis. I don't know why they changed their name because it's the same. It's the same, uh, the same thing. So you will be doing the same, solving other problems using using programs to approximate rather. All right. So for this topic, we're going to look at the graphic approach to uh, the differential equations. Well. So we have this very simple differential equation, y prime equals to x plus y. And we're going to look at their direction field. Well, this direction field is the representation of all the solutions, of all the family of solutions of the differential equation. So if you will, you can think of, you can think of this as the selfie of a differential equation, right? Because this differential equation will give rise to a bunch of members of the family of solution and you can think of this again as the, as the blueprint or the selfie of that differential equation well how are we going to interpret this well uh something you may this you may have seen this kind of graphs if you have taken a physics class uh actually physics too when you go through uh, magnetic fields, electrical fields, how those fields have certain direction, right? So, uh, well, in this case, we can fill in different graphs, you know, that go along the directions. That's another solution. Uh, that's another solution. That's uh, 
another solution. There's many solutions out there. All right, that go through these direction slopes, to this direction field. Well, uh, how do we connect anyway? How do we connect this uh, we're looking picture with this equation? So first of all, we need to interpret what this differential equation is telling us. Number one, basic definitions here. So let's circle y prime. Well, what's prime anyway? Isn't it the derivative, right? And what's the derivative? Well, the slope, the derivative of the slope at a given point. I mean, that's the general definition. Nothing new. Alright, and in this case, well, this y prime, which is the slope, y prime equals to x plus y. So this means that, uh, it means the following. This means that, whoops. Uh -uh, I'm use a different color here. Hmm? Yes. This means that the slope for this particular situation is define by the sum of the given the sum of the x and y of the given point right so that's how we will find the slope well so we're going to use this idea to in this case find the slope at different points so for example let me find the slope at different points so what's the slope at a um, slope at the point zero comma zero well that's y prime equals that's the x value, that's the y value. Well, what's zero plus zero, isn't it? Okay, let's go to the point, let's go to the origin, zero, zero. Did you see this horizontal line? That horizontal line represents the slope of the particular solution to that equation that passes through that point with that horizontal line. What about the slope at the point, let's choose the point one comma one. Well, so that's y prime equals, in this case, by the differential equation, 1 plus 1, which equals to 2 or 2 over 1, because rise to run 1. It's important to see this rise over 1. So, well, in this case, if we go to the point 1, comma 1, so we would get this slope right here, which essentially would have a steepness of 2 over 1. One more example, uh, what about the slope at the point, which is another random point, negative 1 comma negative 2. Well, that's y prime equals the x value, which is negative 1, minus the y value, which plus the y value, which is negative 2. That's negative 3. Well, let's go to the point negative 1 comma negative 2, which is this point and looking at this little line right here does that line seem to have a slope of negative three yeah. i mean it's a negative slope it's going down so seems to make sense over here now so now that we got an understanding of how do we how do we go about this direction fields this or slope fields so let's trace the graph of the function whose particular solution or initial value rather is given by y of 0 equals to 1. In other words, when x equals 0 and y equals to 1. So let's go to that point. x equals 0, y equals to 1. Alright, the slope is actually 1. 0 plus 1, which is 1. 
Look at this diagonal line. Doesn't that seem to have to be a slope of 1? Rise 1, run 1. Alright, I mean by just eyeballing the graph. But what they're, what they're asking us to do, in fact, is to trace the graph that contains that point. So we need to look at all these slopes that pass through that graph. And in fact, that matches the second graph, right? Actually, what I did here is to, well, to bring the blank graph and the actual solution. And that's as you can see how we construct these solutions. And again, of course, we can trace many more, many more solutions, you know. This is like a, like a flow, if you will, different solutions, right? But we just want one. All right.